Hey guys, here's another painting session with Maxim Grunin at Maxim Grunin Art. It's really nice to be back. It's amazing that people are watching this. It's nice that you're watching this. I am uh, showing you all my tools, the paints, and uh, I have a piece of canvas. Uh, taped to a masonite board and uh, I'm using black, white, yellow and red acrylics and I'm looking at a, a picture on my laptop and I found a picture that I liked when I was doing a search for a sunset, sunset uh, at a lake or on the lake so like a lake environment landscape with the sunset and i wanted to do mm, like a, a demo and uh, a tutorial of what would be one of the methods that i would use to or what would be the method and what would be a way to paint that scene so this is i consider this a, like a, a sketch with paint like a study a painting session a warm-up or just like a roughing in an idea and i'm looking at a picture of a lake sunset so in this case it's possible to create a background of the sky right away like to build that notion that there is uh, uh, yellow mixed with white like that really bright white yellow in uh, somewhere in uh, close to the horizon then there is uh, yellowy and orangey and pinkish and purpley um, areas as, as the uh, light goes out from the middle from the horizon and towards the edges of the picture it like supposedly it's darker because the sunlight is more behind the trees far back behind the sh there in the far back so i built that notion of of these you know darker purples orange browns reds yellows pale yellow and nearly a white in the middle and then drew a um, line across horizontally to mark the line on which all of these trees in the far back uh, across the lake are sitting and I mixed a, like a, a purple uh, more black a little bit of red a little bit of white and maybe a bit more red and so I came up with this purpley dark gray to uh, paint the far back trees with and I didn't want them to be just black there is gonna be another area that's closer so I wanted a bit more neutral like not fully black not full contrast so i kind of designed or created that area for all the different trees to sit there in the far back and then i mixed a lighter gray and kind of softened the edges of the greenery of the trees i softened these edges and then i painted in uh, a bit more of that bright light with white and yellow in it and connected the sky to the trees in a kind of a softer um, more integrated way so it doesn't appear like a paper cutout because um, the reason to soften the edge is uh, purely observational purely uh, in a sense of how nature appears to human eye if we just look at anything anywhere around us and especially further away if we look at the trees or any kind of 
natural phenomena, even buildings, anything. Look at the edges of the objects. They are fuzzy and they are a bit soft on the eye. There is no hard um, line. There is no hard shapes in nature or in the way human eye perceives it. So sometimes it's possible to produce a really hard line, like if you put uh, a lot of bright light onto a surface and place an object on it, it's going to be sharp there and the shadow is going to be dark, but you know. So let's uh, let's return back to what I'm doing. I, I'm looking at a picture and I know that there is an island a bit closer than the, the background trees in uh, far back there. So I uh, reserved black for that island and the shadow or the reflection that it's casting down into the water. So I kind of created a diverse shape of trees on the island so that they're not cartoony or childish or like overly stylized. I kind of mm, re-envisioned, like I translated from the photographic image that I'm looking at into painted shapes and I gave them like a bit of an expressive, a bit of a diversity. So, you know, really carefully kind of designed the shapes. Then I dropped uh, that dark down towards the lake surface and then I went in into that reflection with other midtones that are found you know all around like the the brown red came in and these squiggly kind of z kind of s shapes that went down i cut into the black reflection i mm, swirled down i took a um, lighter brown like the yellowy ochre one and i swirled on the edge of that cluster of black that i painted under the island so i worked into that area to you know, with these squiggly kind of horizontals like i could you know like kind of a s shape or a squiggle or a z so it's almost like a calligraphy you know kind of dropping these these s's or these z's down onto the surface and then kind of breaking them up so you know i had like a gray there then I went in with a lighter yellow kind of ochre and then that covered all of the gray so I'm building some of the gray back but I am giving the brush strokes more of a horizontal kind of squiggly characteristic when it is on the surface of the water this is because i am like you know looking at the picture of the water or like i like going near natural bodies of water and then when you look at the characteristics within the reflection like the water sometimes it could be still but sometimes it moves ever slightly or you know just like just a tiny bit and already things are like woo they're like um, starting to dance in these uh, wiggly ways down into reflecting in the water so that's pretty much you know like i'm including that kind of mode of using like i'm taking the paint and i'm painting but i'm also sometimes shaping the strokes and the, how they blend into these kind of horizontal squiggly shapes and it, it takes a little experience and a little knack and you you will quickly gain it like you know try to do an exercise like this and then follow up with um, uh, you know another few of very similar like choose a landscape of a lake sunset and try one or even do this one that I'm doing and then uh, use what you've learned from that experience to construct craft another painting of of your own choosing with the subject being of your own choosing so um 
the water is quite reflective and I am taking the colors from you know what 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 is reflecting in the water the trees the, uh, and there are these darker shapes and then they're squiggled like to move around with the water but uh, w uh, like what are the colors those are the sky the colors taken from the sky are reflecting down um, into the water and you know they are giving me the clue to what the color would be so I'm taking um, like maybe the rusty orange I'm taking these purple grays I'm taking even some highlights to some of the areas there and I am building little by little little by little I'm building this layer up until there is a um, until there is a, a satisfying feeling that, oh, look, you know, I'm starting to see this island with these trees and the reflection of this island in the water. And I'm kind of liking how the background is faded and uh, lighter and it's further away. And, uh, you know, what else can I add? What else can I do? And then little by little, you'll get to a point where the painting, your study is balanced enough that it stands like alone it it can say this picture is telling me that it's quite lovely and it's getting there and it uh, like now i can just enjoy looking at it and photograph it and uh, share it with friends or you know so it's complete it's complete at some point it's uh it's like cooking a meal and you know if the same chicken or the same veggies that are not cooked you know they taste different like especially the meat like you don't want that meat when it's raw but <laughs> it's like i don't know if this is a good analogy but um, i do love cooking and i notice that i i compare oftentimes it's like wait till it's done like you know and then let it steep that painting so that painting is going to get done and then uh, look at i dropped uh, a drop of paint onto the island with the darker trees and then i lifted the paint with a palette knife and quickly marked you know the black right back so i managed to kind of paint some more information into the sky to uh, the reference picture shows that there are some clouds in the far back and and whatnot so i tried to mix um, like a, a light purpley gray i mixed a bit of redder a bit of red into it made it more red i softened the edges of all of the objects i introduced a bit more highlight within the sky I introduced more colorful information within the water down below because you know if there is a gray appearing in the sky then some of it will reflect in the water and then the painting pretty much became complete and uh, I can even crop it like this and I can I can stretch this piece of canvas over a little a stretcher or a piece of wood and turn it into a painting and that's our painting session today thanks for joining me guys